which is um,
this allows me to do is to um, tree views. It allows me to see the page views of all the um, of all the articles within a category. So if we go to um, environmental organisations, for instance, we can see we've got lots of subcategories as well. We'll go into all those subcategories and measure all those um, articles within those subcategories. I did this for. Um, the UNESCO World Heritage Sites, and it's a little bit messy because the category is often not quite correct or just a little bit off with them. But I saw that um, the UNESCO World Heritage Sites were getting hundreds of millions of views every year, like in total for the whole, for the whole thing. Um, and I think this allows you to go to big organisations and say, hey, this is like the readership of the subject that you're you're interested in on Wikipedia, and it's the largest information source for most things, so it's, it's always going to have a like, hilariously big number. Um, does everybody know where the ether packs are? No? Okay. Um, if you go to the Wikimania website and type in ether packs, and then scroll down and go to the evaluation. This is like the participatory bit. Um, so if you can scroll down, and uh, it's in here. So if we go um, something like, um, I'd just like you to have a conversation with the person next to you and talk about like, why are we measuring these things? Why, why is it important to know the numbers for Wikimedia projects? Um, if you can just do that for a few minutes, that would be great because I really want like there's a wealth of knowledge in this room. Like, I see like people who've worked on all sorts of <laughs> projects, so, like my friends are here, but also so, people who've worked with organizations who are interested in social media projects. And I, I'd like to just talk to the person next to you and talk about um, like why is it important for you to have uh, numbers about this sort of thing? Because like I don't think there's been this discussion really about uh, with and like a wide range of people, why are we talking about this stuff? Um, and if you can just put in, if you can just put in the agenda in the CV pad, we'll just write it down on a bit of paper and like we can collect them all up at the end. I just want to kind of ca capture this that the there's like I don't really feel like there's been a discussion of what we actually want what tools we actually want, there seems to be uh, more of a, um, that's what I'm looking for, like what is possible, but I'd really like it to be more like, what do we actually want to do and set goals for um, the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, the, uh, the goals for where we actually want to get to with measurement, not just like what's possible right now. Um, so if you could just like talk amongst yourself for a few minutes. And um, and come up with some answers to this. That would be wonderful. Go on. <laughs> Thank you. 
great. Obviously, we've got a big list now. I wonder if a couple of you would mind talking briefly about like what you think are the most important things around this subject. Um, do you guys want to talk first? Because we have a nice conversation. I, I'll only pick on you once, so I promise. Sure. Um, I was just um, discussing how I think also that one of the issues that we don't um, tend to think about is that not just like what kinds of metrics the things we want to measure, but also um, how the metrics are delivered and what the interface is. Because I know from my perspective, at a cultural institution, if I'm not a Wikipedian, um, you know, what I really want is to be able to like subscribe to a monthly or quarterly report. Um, and that's something that we haven't really gotten to that point yet. <coughs> uh, that's wonderful. I think also subscribing to other people's monthly report within organizations would be great. Uh, it generates pretty graphs. Does anybody else want to say anything? Oh, yes. Um, one thing that strikes me is that a lot of what we do is measuring raw numbers. Like we have X many people using this material to contribute. But we don't necessarily know if there's this relative value in that. Um, the top ranked British library image of Wikipedia is a nice pretty picture used in a template to say this is about the Middle Ages. So it really doesn't purvey any you know, coherent value. A thousand views of that versus ten views of something that's actually critical commentary around the second one is more valuable. But raw page views don't give us away, so maybe we can look at context and stuff. Um, there are a lot of people having problems hearing. Yes. Yes. So yes. I, don't, I don't know what the best way, maybe just like come up to the speaker. Do you want to just shout back to them? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Maybe, 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 maybe. So uh, Andrew is please like nod and frown. Uh, Andrew is saying that the problem is with raw numbers is that often it's hard to measure the inherent value in those raw numbers. So he's gave the example of a image used on a template on Wikipedia that is used on lots of pages as part of the, the page information so that it gets like ridiculously high views compared to everything else because it is used but not in for like an educational purpose. Um, I think what matters, as you say, what matters is not the raw numbers, it's a discussion you have after you have the raw numbers. Metrics doesn't mean anything if you don't have a discussion after. And that's the, the, just the starting point. Uh, yeah, I'm a uh, um, former museum director and curator. We now design exhibitions. The thing that's really interesting about this is that when people build exhibitions, they don't build in an iterative process to change them and improve them. So as you say, if the metrics are used to change the cultural product, that's fantastic. This just seems like it's really, if you compare it to production engineering, <coughs> it's like a very, very, very early stage. Because uh, there isn't an iterative loop very often. Oh. Has anybody, please, if anybody wants to put their hand up as well. Anyone? Yes, great.
by the by the lake. I think that'd be nice if anybody wants to come out. I'll be there and we can have a chat. Um, can anybody suggest what we can do with this information now we've collected it? Obviously, I'd like to show it to someone at the foundation, but I'm not quite sure which person to talk to to get the tools. Liam. <coughs> <laughs>
corner but we need a foundation. Okay, they kind of had the name for us, but like only for a few weeks, so it's not totally as if you guys bought it, but if you have any better ideas for how it will feel free to the name one. Uh, like, oh yeah. So no, uh, and uh, the fundamental difference, just to get that done right away, is that Wikimetrics is about cohort of users and getting data on it. The web metrics, and we'll get into that more later, is about collections of content, and specifically on Wikimedia Commons, so the Wikimedia library of the Wikimedia project, and so the best one ever. And um, so a research question that I made us while we've been developing that tool for uh, the past year, I think now, uh, about uh, 12 months uh, and more, is we want to highlight the work done by volunteer. This is what we want to do, and anything else, decision making, maybe not lab, happy or whatever, is like a uh, cool bonus, but this is what we want to do. Uh, volunteers are doing awesome work, and we felt that the tools that currently exist in the Wikiverse ecosystem did not uh, show that enough, and that's why we embarked on that journey. So that journey started uh, a long time ago, in the past, not that long, um, uh, in 2010. Uh, so I'm going to make you a quick history of what we've been building for uh, four years, and how that converted into the tool we have now. So in 2010, we're about, we had a partnership with the French National Library and Wikisource, and you can read that more on the meta page, PNF. There's a lot of cool information on there. And at the time, um, the like, metrics on Wikisource were virtually existent. Um, and so we had to, um, okay, what do we want to do? And we thought we want to highlight the work done by the Wikisource volunteers, uh, how much they're working. And since we are uh, scientists and geeks, we had a very uh, scientific driven approach. So if there are um, um, scientists in the room, at the time we use a string uh, algorithm used uh, called the Lennerstein distance in order to measure as uh, it's a uh, proofreading process. So that's uh, very impressive. That's a moment to say, oh. And I, um, but uh, what we discovered at the time was the process was so painful that we were supposed to generate a new report every three months, and we only did one. Because it was just so painful to extract the data and rerun the metrics again. So that was our first learning. Uh, in 2011, we had a massive flow on Wikimedia Commons, a uh, name code named Juta for a uh, French photographer uh, from the 20th century. And at the time, we wanted to know, OK, how much the community uh, it gets interested in this, um, uh, this collection? Are they editing it? Are they adding categories? Are they geotagging picture? And so at the time, uh, uh, is anybody telling me for me? Yes, that? I am. Thanks. Um, and if I speak too fast, please like, move your hands somehow, because I'm trying to do it. I guess um, And we use uh, media wiki dump analysis. Um, yeah, I don't know if you've been warned that it's going to be like, kind of technical sometimes. So you can also move your hand, but in a different fashion to tell to warn me that it's too. <laughs> yeah, good one. Thank you. Just, just do the glam thing in the, like the <laughs> makes sense. Um, so that analysis that was very good, uh, and, um, but it was also painful for those purpose for and what we learned that was very good because it scaled because it was applicable to virtually any category or any collections of comments. That was learning. 
program is manually for all the NDC reports, so it's like, okay, who wants to do it? And then write the report, so no. You want it to be scalable because you have some programs that have only 100 files in it, and some others, like the club reports, which is over 20,000 files, and if it doesn't scale, it's like, okay, I'm going to wait for the result for one year, so I can't do my report. Shit. And also, we want our tool to do what we want. So we want our tool to be flexible on protein. Say. So we want to be able to shape it the way we want. So this is basically our values. And our last value, um, we want the burden to be on the evaluators and not to be on the user. What we mean by the user is the one running the program. We don't want them to have another burden. For example, we don't want volunteers to have more tasks to do so that we can do evaluation. So this is, for us, the value also of our tool. Familiar with templates, ah, and uh, 
number of people that have uploaded a picture, um, the number of files that have been uploaded, for example, then your year, your FDC run, so that's just technical things for people that are using FDC reporting to know if they are on fiscal year or year starting in July. And then, okay, you just have to hit enter. And it will compute something like that. It will generate a meta template, so you just have to copy paste it on meta. And it will give you something like that, so you can put it directly on your MDC report. Um, basically, the table that it generates is a template, so you can configure it also. But what we want to do is really something that you can automate. You give um, a media collection, you say, okay, I want that, that, and that, and it does everything. The coffee also, if you want. Can you explain a bit what the numbers are? Okay, here are the numbers, uh, something we generated before. So the number of files number online by quarter, so you can see the evolution. Here, the year to date, yeah. um, the number of files that have been highlighted, so the number of files that have been promoted on Wikimedia Commons as either quality image, valued image, or featured image. The number of users, so it's the number of logins that have uploaded an image, so you have 10, 13, <coughs> and the year to date is 25. Just to notice, it's not the sum, because some users can be shared. And then the, perc the percentage of files that have been highlighted gives you a good idea of how good you are or not. Sure. So this is totally automatic. And um, we'll have more later. Yeah. Okay, going back to the present. So what have we learned? Um, basically, we want to do more web interfaces, uh, no more queries that people have to type into a Linux console, because it's okay, but it's hard to reproduce, because you have to do it on a lot of things, and it's not really user-friendly, and we want, we want it to be user-friendly. Um,
developer driven. So that means that we are asking ourselves the questions of oh, that might be fun to compute and probably not always that might be really interesting to measure. So that's why we're looking at people to ask us a high level question. So we're definitely looking for people to take that uh, to take that job. So are you volunteering? Let's be good at what we 